Hello everybody and welcome back to Time to Cook, the cook-along show where I teach my friends and through them you at home a different delicious dish every week. On Monday we give you the dish and all the ingredients that you need and then on Wednesday we post a full cook-along video so that you can simply press play and cook along at home. Uh, this week is week 22 of this show. I cannot believe I've been doing it for this long. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, that's it's half crazy. a year. Yeah, it started out as just a little like little Corona project. It'll all be over in a few months, <laughs> Corona and the project. And now here we are, half a year later. Um, but I'm back with Time to Cook regular, Seb. Hello, Seb. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. And little Byron, who is being oh so quiet and calm, which is not usually the way with these Yeah, give him a second. Yeah. Get the hair's ear out. He likes chomping down on a disgusting hair's ear. Whenever I come round, I think Seb just saves it for whenever I come round. Um, but yes, what do you think of the array of ingredients that I've set out here for you? Uh, you well, I love a risotto. You have spied the risotto rice, indeed. That is the main component. Uh, I love an asparagus risotto. Very good. Celebrating spring and Spargelzeit. It's Spargelzeit. Yes, on. very exciting moment in Germany because asparagus is only available for a short window of time and people get very excited about it. So it's the most exciting time in Germany. It is the most exciting which time. Which tells you a little bit about how exciting Germany is. <laughs> Whatever, it's, asparagus is exciting. I am happy to celebrate that. Uh, beetroot, are you fan of beetroot? I love a beetroot. Very I love good. a beetroot risotto. There I love a go. borscht sometimes. Oh, yes. Let's just do that yeah. instead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so what I am going to teach you today is uh, a hairy biker's recipe. I don't know if you know those guys. I've seen them on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. They bike around, they cook food, they are hairy, uh, and they cook very delicious food. And this is one of their recipes. I think it's also available on the BBC Good Food website. Um, it is a beetroot goat's cheese risotto. The original recipe paired this with kale chips, kale crisps. Um, but they deep fry. When I've done it in the past, I've done the kale chips in the oven. I just find it a little bit easier when you're dealing with a risotto and less scary with splattering oil. Um, but kale season is over, uh, very, very seasonal here. So you can really only get kale up to say maybe end of April at a push and then it disappears. Um, so I thought that was a perfect time to bring in some seasonal asparagus instead. It hasn't featured yet. I think I should use the white asparagus as well in some dish. That is actually the more common asparagus here, or the one they got, we get more excited about anyway. Which one do you prefer? White or green? I prefer green. Yeah. I always prefer green. I prefer green, I think. But the white, it is really nice. It's much sweeter. Um, but that's one reason that I think green works better in this dish, because it's quite sweet anyway um, with the beetroot. So this is just going to be, we're just going to roast the asparagus and have it as like a little garnish on top just beautiful. Um, so ingredients wise, this is what you are all going to need to get to cook along with us. Um, main component, of course, risotto rice. We've got 300 grams of risotto arborio rice here. Um, the other main component is our beetroot. Now, you could use fresh beetroot, but um, for sake of ease and time, um, and the original recipe also uses pre-cooked, vacuum packed. So uh, yeah, I think that is easier all around. If you do use fresh, you just need to roast it all up beforehand, basically. Um, 500 grams of that. Now half of this is actually gonna be going into the stock and then the other half we're gonna be roasting as well. Did you know that you can roast pre-cooked beetroot? I did not know that. Neither did I until about two hours ago when I did it for the very first time just to check that it worked. And it does, yes. <laughs> because that's also not part of the original recipe. They just chop up the rest and stir it through. But I thought roasting more stuff can only be good. Um, so into the risotto mix, of course, there's going to go some onion, one white onion. We're going to use two large cloves of garlic. Um, we need some fat in that risotto, of course. So we've got 30 grams of butter here. We're also going to be using olive oil. We've not got that out, but about two tablespoons. Um, you'll need for the risotto and then a bit more to drizzle over the veggies that we're going to roast and some stock my trusty delicatessen veggie stock that I think I take to everyone's house just in case they don't have it uh, I love it so we'll be needing about a litre of stock in total um, herb wise it's quite paltry but we just need one little sprig of thyme that is all it needs oh wait she says sitting next to a jungle of herbs. Uh, we're also going to be putting in some fresh parsley and some fresh dill. 
another little nod to Germany because I feel they put dill in everything and it actually really put me off dill when I first moved here. You haven't been to Russia. Okay. They put dill on everything. everything. Okay. Is this like a beetroot dill thing then? That's a quite Eastern European thing. Right. Because yeah. yeah. I was a little bit baffled by that when I first saw it in this recipe. I was like, really? Dill in a beetroot risotto? But it works. It works well. So yeah, we'll be chucking some of that in as well. And a little lemon juice at the end. I find that works. Um, or it kind of needs that acidity a little bit. The... Goat's cheese, this is um, 150 grams that we're going to need. That is just crumbled on at the end, so super easy. In fact, a lot of this just goes on at the end. Um, most of the, the sort of base of the risotto is quite simple, really. And some wine, how could I forget? Right in the middle there. Always need some dry white wine or some dry vermouth uh, for a risotto. It kind of deglazes the pan once you've been frying down the onion. And uh, yeah, then you can drink the rest. Yeah, don't buy any wine that you wouldn't want to drink. Very true. That would be a fool's game. Yeah. Especially when we only need 100 mils of this, I should say. So plenty left for us. Um, and I think that's actually it, which sounds like very few ingredients for how delicious this dish is. But that's what we like, isn't it? Simplicity. Yeah. Uh, Equipment-wise, I should say, we are going to need a blender of some kind. We're going to be using just a handheld stick blender. Um, if you have a food processor, a smoothie maker, or anything like that, that would work as well. Um, and that's just to blitz up half of the beetroot and the stock um, so that we make kind of this beetrooty stock. So that is quite necessary. Otherwise, I don't think it calls for anything out of the ordinary. We'll be needing a nice heavy based pan or a casserole dish, if you have one, um, to cook the actual risotto in. And otherwise, we'll be roasting these veggies um, on a baking tray with some baking parchment. Easy. Sounds ready to good. cook? I'm ready. Excellent. All right, you will have a few days as ever to get your ingredients, and we will see you for the cook along on Wednesday. See you then.